IELTS Writing Task 1, Lesson 8, Comparison Diagram. Comparison diagrams show changes to something, for example, an old design compared to a new design, or two alternative designs, or even two alternative locations on a map. Don't worry if that's not clear at the moment. I'm going to give you examples of the, these three types. We'll start with the first type, changes to something. Two pictures showing an old design and a new design. Here's an example that's similar to a real question in one of the IELTS books. We see a plan of a school building, for example, in 1980. This plan would show buildings, car parks, school fields, etc. And then we see next to it a plan of the same school building in the year 2012 and there's probably some changes from one building plan to the next and we have to compare the changes so the question would be something like this the diagrams show changes to a school building over a period of 32 years and I would call this a before and after diagram looking back at the types then we'll stay on the first type because you can also have a map that shows changes to a design there's a good question in Cambridge IELTS Book 9 showing an island. So this is a, a quick example of what that question looks like. You see a map of an island before tourism and next to it you'll see another map which is the same island after construction of tourist facilities. And the question could look like this. The maps show an island before and after the construction of facilities for tourists. And again this is before and after. I'd call this a before and after map. And I consider this to be exactly the same task as the before and after diagram task. Don't worry that they are maps. It's no different from the diagram question. Let's move on to the second type now of comparison diagram, the two alternative designs. And in another of the official IELTS books, there's a good example of this you see a house design for warm climates compared to the house design for cold climates. And in this question, I haven't put everything here, this is just a very quick sample of what the question looks like. In the real question, you see a different roof, different windows, lots of different features of design that are different for the two types of climate. So the question could look something like this. The diagrams show different house designs for warm and cold climates and I call this an alternative designs diagrams question. The final type of comparison diagram is what I call two alternative locations on a map, a map question. And there's a good question again in one of the official Cambridge IELTS books like this. You see the map of a town or city and two locations, location A and location B. And the real question is about this. The map shows two possible locations for a new supermarket. You see a town or a city and these two possible locations. There will be more information, of course, on the real question. But here, your job is to compare these two possible locations. A in the centre of the town or city and B outside the city and I'd call this an alternative locations map and for all of these types of question your task is the same your job is to compare the diagrams that's all you need to do so what can we compare well we can describe the changes if it's a before and after diagram you'll see some changes to the picture you'll also think see things that don't change so you can describe things that don't change that stay the same. If it's a comparison diagram with two alternative designs or two alternative locations on a map, instead of describing changes we just describe the differences and describe the similarities. That's all you can really do. Look at the two pictures, describe what is different and what is similar. Before we do today's question, one important thing to note. Think about the verb tense that you'll use when describing these diagrams. 
If we go back to my first example, the diagram showing before and after with the school plans, look at the years. We've got 1980 and 2012. So all of this is going to be in the past. So we'll use the past simple. For example, in 1980, the school had, let's say, 10 classrooms. And in 2012, our new classroom was built. There you've got past simple in the active with had and in the passive with was built. The years are in the past, so we just use the past simple. If we look at the map showing before and after, it's similar, but we might have a difference in the verb tenses. We go back to this island question. When we're looking first at the map of the island before tourism, that's easy. It's past simple again because this was in the past what the island used to look like. For example, there were no buildings on the island. Past simple. However, when we look at the island after construction of tourist facilities, we can use two tenses. We can use the present simple or the present perfect. This is what we see on the island now. For example, there is now a hotel, present simple. A hotel has been built, that's the present perfect in the passive, because this is what we see on the island now. Very similar to the previous type of diagram where we're comparing before and after with the school, but this time um, the second diagram is not in the past, it's still what we can see now. Now another complication is when we look at a diagram showing now and the future. Take the school plan again. If we have the plan of a school building, but this time the plan is now compared to planned changes for the school building, which will be in the future, this becomes different. Now we need to use the present simple and the will future. For example, at present, the school has 10 classrooms. According to the new plan, a new classroom will be built. There we've got the present simple with has, and the future with the passive also will be built. This is the same question almost as the one that we saw before, but in, instead of having the years 1980 and 2012, which were in the past, now we've got the school as it looks now and a future plan for changes to the school. You have to be careful about choosing the verb tenses. Let's look at another of those examples that we had, the alternative designs diagrams. This diagram question with the two houses. What tense would we use for this one? Well, the answer is present simple because no time is shown. You would say this house has a certain type of roof, whereas this house is built with, again, you can use the active and the passive. Has is present simple active, is built, present simple passive. It's all in the present simple because we have no past or future time. Another question, the alternative locations map. This was our question showing the two lo locations. Which verb tense would you use for this one? I would suggest again using the present simple. So we could say the potential location A is in the city centre, whereas location B is situated just outside the city. If any of that seems confusing, just remember that your job is to compare the diagrams describing changes or things that don't change, differences, similarities, whether it's a map, alternative designs, before and after, it doesn't matter. You're just doing these basic things. Let's look now at our comparison diagram question for today. Here's the question. Read the statement at the top first with me. The diagrams below show the existing ground floor plan of a house and a proposed plan for some building work. Then we look at the top diagram, it says existing floor plan. Then there's the bottom diagram, proposed changes. Already you should have noticed that this is going to be a now and future question. 
So we're going to use the present tense and the future tense with will because the proposed diagram is for the future. It hasn't been done yet. OK, let's go through our normal process of writing four paragraphs. Introduction, overview and two paragraphs of details. Starting with the introduction, we just need to paraphrase the question. Here's the question again and we'll go through section by section rewriting. First, the diagrams below show I've written the two pictures compare. The existing ground floor plan of a house, the current layout of the ground floor of a house, and a proposed plan for some building work with a plan to redesign the same living space. And that's the introduction finished. The two pictures compare the current layout of the ground floor of a house with a plan to redesign the same living space. Now we can go on to our overview. Two sentences, two main points. We need to look at the diagrams again and decide what to choose for this overview. So here's the diagram. And the main thing that I noticed first is that the hall that you see on the existing floor plan disappears. It's no longer on the new diagram. The other point that I'm going to mention for my overview is about the entrance doors. I might also include the external walls as well. And the interesting thing about that is that they are things that don't change. One tip for your overview for this type of diagram, you might choose one main thing that changes and one main thing that doesn't change. So I've seen that the entrance doors stay the same and I could add the external walls maybe to that as well. So here's my overview anyway. First sentence, we can see that the new design proposal involves making a number of changes to the ground floor of the house, mainly in the central hall area. So that's the point about the main change in the hall. Then for things that don't change, there are no plans to change external walls or entrances. And that's my overview finished. Now we go on to the details paragraphs three and four. And starting with paragraph three, we need to look at the diagrams again and choose what we're going to describe. Many people for this type of diagram would separate the two diagrams, one for paragraph three and one for paragraph four. I'm not going to do that. I prefer to compare the two diagrams. You'll get a higher score if you do that. So in paragraph three, I'm going to compare maybe half of the elements that we can see. I'm going to start off by talking about the hall and the fact that it disappears. I'll mention that this wall disappears to make the living room a bigger space. And I'll mention that that has an effect on the stairs as well. And I'll save some of the other elements for paragraph four. So back to paragraph three then, this is what I wrote. The most noticeable change from the existing to the proposed floor plan is that there will no longer be a separate hall area when the building work has been done. This will be achieved by removing the internal wall and door between the hall and living room, along with the current staircase and under stair storage cupboard. With no separate hall area, the proposed living room will also contain the staircase to the first floor. That's paragraph three done. We go on to paragraph four and look at which elements we haven't described yet. And I'm going to include in this paragraph a detailed description of the new stairs, plus something about this wall and doors and then about the kitchen furniture here. Here's what I wrote. To replace the current straight staircase, a new set of winding stairs will be installed in the corner of the living room. The internal door between the hall and kitchen will also be replaced with double doors connecting the kitchen with the new living room. Finally, the planned building work will also include the installation of some kitchen furniture. As usual, I've written three sentences there and I've finished describing both
diagrams together, but with the elements that I didn't include in paragraph 3. That's the full report finished because, as usual, we have no conclusion. So all that's left is to analyse the vocabulary. And this time we're going to look at paraphrasing, the verbs, the tenses, and the specific description of changes. Let's look at the vocabulary that I think examiners would be impressed by. First, we had the phrase existing plan in the question, and I changed that to current layout. Also in the question, proposed plan, plan to redesign. Then some more vocabulary, design proposal, planned building work. There will no longer be. Now this is where we get on to the future tense. More future tenses. This will be achieved by removing. Will also contain, will also include. And let's have a look at some future tenses with the passive will be installed, will be replaced. The design pro proposal involves, now that one is present simple, involves. And a different tense, when the building work has been done. So there I've used the present perfect for the future. And finally some of the vocabulary I used just to describe the different elements living space, central hall area, staircase, under stair storage cupboard, a new set of winding stairs, that's good vocabulary, winding stairs means stairs that go round the corner, and finally the installation of some kitchen furniture. So there's some good paraphrasing, there's some interesting verb tenses used, active and passive as well, and some good vocabulary to describe the different elements in the diagrams. That's the end of today's lesson about comparison diagrams. Print the worksheet, watch the lesson again, and analyse each sentence carefully. This will help you to understand all of the information given today. In the next lesson, I'll talk a little bit more about maps, and I'll give a summary of everything we've done in these Writing Task 1 lessons.